Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're gonna to be talking about tibial torsion, or you might better recognize it as a foot turnout of the lower leg. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. It doesn't get better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this. All right, so like I said, today's video is on tibial torsion. And first of all, let's talk about what tibial torsion is and where it's actually coming from. So what you'll generally see when someone has a lower leg that's in tibial torsion is that their foot will be pointed outward and their knee will sit in line with more of the big toe or even the space in front of the big toe to the side of the big toe there. So it's a malalignment overall and an overall systematic breakdown of the leg that's occurring to try and create some form of stability. Now the problem with this is multi-purpose here. So first of all, it's gonna cause limited ankle mobility, which is gonna lock up the ankle, make it, first of all, pretty much immobile and start to render what's happening at your toes even uh, useless pretty much there because your body is almost avoiding that altogether. And if you've had a history of injury at the toes, this could be a reason why that's occurring. So bunions or any type of big toe injury where your body's avoiding that pressure to the foot, that could be something that drives that, okay? So just be aware that it can come from above or below these problems and that shift in the body overall to create that overall structure that's gonna get you by but not make you thrive overall let's put it that way so above that we can also see problems at the hip itself so if the hip is lacking the ability to rotate in a proper way and hold stability through rotation of the whole system of the leg torsion okay we see tibial torsion as the lower portion trying to do that rotation rather than the whole leg working together to create torsion through the whole system of the leg. And that's where the foot and the hip are very important. If you lack mobility at the foot, if you've been wearing shoes for a long time that don't really support a healthy structure to the foot, you can't ground very well and connect to the floor through three points of contact of your foot, that first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal, and heel, and you don't have the ability to actually grip the floor with good strength from your feet, that can be problematic, as well as, again, limited rotation from the hip. So those are two things to be concerned with. But today we're gonna to be specifically looking at pieces that you can do directly at the tibia itself to help promote better internal rotation so that when your hip is doing the correct function and when your foot does still have good function, you aren't just limited by the action of your tibia itself. Okay, so today's exercises are specifically focused on tibial internal rotation. Ready? Let's go ahead and start to take a look at them. All right, our first exercise is a blocked test. So you wanna take a yoga block and place it between the knees there so that you're unable to move from the hip. You're also gonna keep the heel planted as you are seated in this position. What we wanna do is dorsiflex the ankle as much as possible picking the feet up and then setting them internally rotating as much as possible. What you'll notice is that you might see a difference between the rotation from one side to the other. So if you look closely at my feet here, you can actually see the difference in my right leg compared to my left leg's internal rotation from that tibia there. And that's exactly what we're looking for is those differences, those imbalances in this test. Now we can also use this as our first means of strengthening this motion. So trying to repetitively take that test over and over into a deeper range of motion can be a good place to begin to build some strength around that tibia to help it rotate internally. Next, we're gonna do some controlled articular rotations, but before we actually get to the rotational part, we're gonna isolate that tibial internal rotation once again. So if you watch the point of my knee just below it, 
you can see a pointy process. That's the tibial tuberosity. And you wanna see that internally and externally rotating as you have the ankle dorsiflexed and move it from internal to external rotation there. So we wanna look for that bony point moving with the rotation of the lower limb. Now, once you see that pretty proficient and it's happening again, okay, or at least we have some control and movement there, we can start to add some controlled articular rotations or cars for short. What that's gonna look like is start with the dorsiflexed ankle first always, because that dorsiflexed ankle is going to lock in and make sure that you're forcing the tibia to rotate. Take it through a full circle once you have that done. So take it to the deep end, internally rotated, drop the foot as far down as you can, and then watch that tibial tuberosity rotate once again with you as you complete the rest of that circle. So we should still see that tibia moving with the foot and ankle as it is rotating through that full controlled articular rotation. Now do both directions here to really train it proficiently and spend some time with these types of movements. Once we're proficient at moving it without any resistance, we can actually take a band and do the same little wag of that tibial tuberosity back and forth with the foot and ankle dorsiflexion, but adding a very light resistance band. We don't need much resistance here. These aren't huge muscles we're working necessarily. It's more about building some strength around it and letting your body experience a little bit of extra load in that movement particularly. So adding load with the band around the forefoot, making sure that you're able to pull internally rotating that tibia, and then keeping the ankle dorsiflex the whole time once again to ensure that the tibia is rotating properly. From here, we're gonna work a little bit more of the whole system. So what we can do is actually start to retrain external rotation of the hip while the lower limb is internally rotated. So what we'll do is take the whole leg and internally rotate it as much as possible and then and add an external rotation torque from the hip. And you should see my knees opening up and my feet dragging against the floor, which they'll open a little bit and this is perfectly fine. Now, take this one slowly. It might feel a little bit uncomfortable at first if you're not used to this rotation. So we internally rotate from the hip and then externally rotate the hip so that it is opening the feet. The whole leg should be internally rotated to start and then you'll drag those feet open as much as possible or just get the stretch from the external rotation of the hip. In the next one, we're retraining the foot patterning a little bit in coordination with that external rotation of the hip. So I wanna pin the end of a band under the first metatarsal of my foot. So that's that bony point in the forefoot just behind the big toe. I'm gonna to pull that band into tension. So if I lose my point on that band, that band is gonna snap out from under my foot. Once I have that band in tension, I'm just gonna add external rotation of the hip. So I'm trying to align my knee with the middle or smaller toes as I open that knee up and keep that band in tension. So again, we're repatterning the ability of the foot to press down through that first metatarsal, keeping contact there. We should also have the fifth metatarsal in the heel as a point of contact on this, and then adding external rotation from the hip. This might feel a little bit challenging at first, your foot might wanna roll, you'll lose that band. Stick with it, get that pressure, and get comfortable holding that band under there with some control from the foot. And lastly, working from the ground up, step into a loop band and then place the band between the big toe and the second toe. Get your feet about hips distance apart, parallel up the legs, and then we're gonna play with some squats here. So you can do regular air squats, but you can also add different little twists at the bottom, playing with your hips a little bit, shifting from side to side, driving the knees open. Again, a whole system here that we're working on. The band between the big toe forces you similarly to the last one 
to pin that band down so you're having a good base and structure. It also allows the foot to fan out more. Look at the spacing between my toes here. So this is restoring foot function in coordination with hip function, which in turn should help your tibial rotation as you get more proficient with it. All right, and there you have it. Simple exercises that you could be performing to help you restore a natural function to the tibia so that your system of your leg is working together as a whole rather than trying to create its own stability in pieces and parts that will eventually cause you aches and pains at the knee, limited range of motion at the ankle, all that stuff that we don't really wanna to have to deal with. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend if you notice they have a foot turnout again where that knee sits inside of the foot for the big toe. Maybe it'll help them start to make some changes as well there and overall improve their structure. Now, if this is something that you want direct help and guidance fully resolving or you have a history of other aches, pains, and injuries that you have not been able to fix and it's been standing in the way of your training, what I want you to do right now is drop down below in the description to fill out a coaching application and schedule your mobility blueprint call. This is our opportunity to get on a call together so that I can assess your current movement limitations and mobility limitations, develop your mobility blueprint, which will be specifically tailored to your needs and goals, and answer any questions that you have about coaching and programming in clarity and detail. So it's our time to make educated decisions on whether this will work for you. And if you want that help, then what you got to do right now is just schedule that call so we can get you on the books and ready to go and start moving in the right direction. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. We'll see you next week.